Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, November 18th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Maryland game is tomorrow, the game against Michigan in just eight days. We are talking scheme today with Buckeye Huddle's X's and O's guru, Ross Fulton. Ross, the Ohio State had two bad weeks on the ground, and then the Buckeye run game looked dominant again on Saturday. They ran for more than 300 yards against, which was what was you know, previously a pretty decent Indiana run defense. So how much of that was Mayan Williams? How much of that was just better offensive line play or different offensive line play with Josh Fryer in there? And how much of that was different schematic stuff that they were doing that was sort of changed things up for him a little bit? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I think that there was better offensive line play. I think there was a renewed emphasis on hand placement and, you know, technique. Those things were noticeable, but to me, the biggest thing was scheme adjustments and some of the things we've talked about the last couple of, of weeks, um, you know, in terms of, like, what's worked best. So they, they basically kind of, like, I think they probably went back, looked at the last few weeks, um, saw, you know, this is what's been working for us, this is what hasn't been working for us. I mean, I think Mind Williams obviously made a big difference, but that's because they were maximizing him and what he does best in the run game um and and not putting him in some of the positions that he was in against Northwestern where he was you know trying to bounce things laterally now it feels to me and I don't know quite why I think this but it feels to me like Mayan Williams is kind of their best option at running back right now that maybe the offense runs best with him at running back right now out of all the options they have and I don't know if that's just he's a little more willing to just kind of go north south and get the yards you know at least or, or at least seemed to be last week or if there's something else, is is that something you would agree with? And if so, uh, tell me why I think what I think. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I agree with you. Now, I will, um, you know, as people on Buckeye Head will probably know, I've tended to be in the camp that Mine Williams has been their best option throughout the season. Um, I will say, though, and, and to, you know, to back up, you know, what they, they emphasized on Saturday was running more interior run plays. Uh, particularly like inside zone and inside split zone. And I think that, as, and less emphasis on running outside zone or stretch. Um, and so, as I said, I think that maximizes my Williams because if you, if you get him going north and south, you know, he has really good feet in the hole. Like, I, I know people like to talk about breaking tackles, but what actually is really good with him is for a big guy, he's really good feet. So, like, guys do not get clean shots on him, which is why he, he breaks so many tackles. Like, you know, on that third and one play, he basically made the inside linebacker whiff in the hole. Um, and so, but I, I will also say that I think that that also suits Travion Henderson better. I think we saw a couple of those runs against Penn State where they ran inside zone, obviously the 41-yarder, but also in the first half, they ran a couple of those inside zone runs from the pistol. And if you, you know, read my articles, you'll see I said at the time, like, why didn't they keep running that well? They went back that to that a lot against Indiana on Saturday. Um, and I think, again, like somewhat for different reasons, just because Henderson's so big and fast. And again, like you just get him going downhill, like let him try to make one cut. And once he gets in the second level, he's explosive. So it, it fits even beyond their offensive line. I think it fits their running backs the best. Um, you know, Dallin Hayden, actually, frankly, I think runs stretch a little bit better. Um, but, you know, he, uh, you know, he just doesn't have the size yet really to like sort of take, you know, break tackles like uh, Henderson or Martin Williams can. Um, so back to your original question. Yes, I think that Williams is is their best bet and definitely would feel more comfortable from an Ohio State perspective if I have mine Williams uh, against Michigan. But I, I still do, in fact, think that like the original plan of having Williams and Henderson in, in, in some type of rotation w would be the ideal for them. And I, and I think they're they're their running styles mesh together such that it's not like you're doing one thing with one and, and a different thing with the other. I think with both, you want to continue to build off of, like, we're going to run inside zone as our primary run play. Even in a game where they ran for more than 300 yards, they were not always great in short yardage trying to run the ball. So what were the issues that you saw there with the run game and short yardage? Ryan Day talked about kind of banging his head against the wall at times uh, in some of those cases. And, you know, are those issues something that they can solve in the next week, or do they just need to sort of find a workaround at this point for short, short yardage against Michigan? Well, I think they can solve it by just not being as predictable by formation. So, you know, and I, 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 I do think he's trying to bang his head against the wall. I think there's a purpose to it, you know. 
I guess you could, you know, debate, is he doing it for himself? Is he doing it for the team? Like, I, I do think he's trying to prove a point. Um, is he doing it to get less questions on Tuesday? I don't know. But he, um, you know, there is a bit of a, a wanting to, to shove the square peg into the round hole aspect of this. And, you know, I, I pointed out some of that, like, uh, you know, that fourth down, I, I know Ryan, Day brought this up during his press conference, like the fourth down counter dive handoff to Mitch Ross. He's like, well, if we cut up, if Chief Scott cuts off the backside, you know, that's a touchdown. It's like, that may be true. That's also the problem when you're trying to block 10 guys near the line of scrimmage. Like, you know, when one thing goes wrong and it, it, it short circuits the play, like you also had Marvin Harrison sitting there in single coverage on a cornerback with no one within 20 yards of him. And so I think, I guess I would say, and then like conversely, as I discussed in my article, like they did throw the ball a couple of times. I think it was like more like third and two, third and three, but they came out and like open what I call open 11. So you like, you have Kate Stover on the field, but he's, he's split out. So you have a, a four wide look essentially. And like, you know, Indiana scouts, just like everyone else does. And like, that is a pass first formation for Ohio state. And so like they checked to cover two. And so Ohio state tried to call a, you know, what I'd call a man beater concept, like up to Harrison, like a, a, a route that works against man coverage, but it, it was zone. And so they kind of, that, they short circuited that. So again, I think you need to pass out or be able to pass out of like run formations, right? Like, as I talked about my article, like, like it would be great if they like under center could do some quick game stuff to Harrison or like sprint out, like something where you're going to catch an opponent and cover zero and be able to throw it. And like conversely, like run in, in pass formations, and like I think they did a better job of that over the rest of the field against Indiana. It just was in their short yardage, and like ironically, they're doing a pretty good job of it near the goal line. Like you see a lot more play action from heavy formations near the goal line. So I think they just need to to bring that philosophy also to the you know third and one at the fifty. All right, so I guess the big question here moving forward for Ohio State is how confident are you that the run game is, and, and I'm going to do some finger quotes here, fixed for whatever your definition of fixed is. Uh, you know, I guess basically the run game won't be a major issue moving forward. Are you are you feeling decent about the fact that Ohio State's going to be able to run the ball at least enough for, again, whatever you define enough as against, you know, Michigan and moving forward into, you know, postseason kind of games? Yeah, so let's let's break it up into like let's take out short yardage. Like, I mean, you know, like I think most people, it would be I, I would feel better about the Ohio State run game if my Williams and Travion Henderson are healthy. Like, I, I do actually think Dallin Hayden's been pretty impressive, but like, I wouldn't want to have to rely upon him. And you know, I think Chip Trainum was a good running back, but he hasn't. You know, he's had one carry this year, so I don't think you want to go into the Michigan game with that. <laughs> uh, so, um, I. I, I have confidence that, like, Brian Day is a smart guy. He saw what happened Saturday. Like, he saw that, like, what worked were, like, those inside zone runs. Um, you know, they mixed in the gap. Like, they finally ran counter Trey again, and they had a 70, Xavier Johnson 77-yard touchdown. So I do think – I think they got the memo on that. I think they, you know, they, they watched the film too. Um, short yardage, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's – I guess we have to sort of see it. You know, I think that – as I said, I think they can fix it. I think I, I really do think that he gets it. You know, I'm not saying they're going to convert every one of those. I'd like to see them quarterback sneak again in short yardage. Like if you turn on the NFL on Sunday, like every team now, like one, with one yard to go QB sneaks, so you can push the quarterback in the back. Um, and, you know, I think that they, as I said, I, running that inside zone from the pistol, I think could help because it can go either side of the of the line. So you, you, you reduce the slanting risk. Um, so I do think there's like, there's options there. I, I think they will be okay. Um, you know, I don't have huge concerns about the run game based off of what I saw Saturday, assuming you have some health in the backfield. All right. One thing that has not been a concern at any point this season for basically any reason is Marvin Harrison Jr., and you wrote about the fact that now it seems like Ohio State is doing more to make it hard for opponents to bracket him. Jim Knowles talked this weekend about the fact that when they're trying to defend Marvin Harrison in practice, you almost have to have a corner and a safety on him. So, you know, if you can make it more difficult for opponents to do that, that seems like that's probably a good thing. So can you explain what Ohio State was doing on Saturday to try and make that a little more difficult? Yeah, so they, they, they essentially put Harrison in the slot some. 
Or, you know, for instance, like I put out one play where um, they initially aligned with uh, him as the outside receiver and Cade Stover in the slot, and then Stover kind of went in some fast motion right before the snap and became the outside receiver, which put Harrison on a linebacker. Uh, you know, they did try to have a safety on him, but basically he beat the linebacker and, the, and shot through before the safety got there. So you are definitely seeing um, them move him around. That third and short play that I just talked about, he was in the slot as well. Because, uh, as I said, like teams are trying, uh, particularly in passing downs, to double or bracket him. Like Now, Ohio State does sometimes use that to their advantage, right? Like I talked about after Northwestern, like part of the plan seemed to be to like put him in Emeka Buka, who they also will tend to sometimes bracket to one side, and knowing that you'll basically get Julian Fleming and Cave Stover with a man coverage with no safety help. Um, and so they are. there are times where, like, the first touchdown to Abuka, like, they put Harrison to one side, he got doubled, and so you had, you know, single coverage opposite. So they are trying to use that to their advantage. I, you know, I do, as I said in my article, and I said after the North- Northwestern game, like, without, it's, so long as they don't have Jackson Smith and Jigba, like, it is incumbent upon Fleming and Stover to make plays when they are singled up like that because, you know, they are going to get cover zero. And, like, so, you know, Fleming had the big drop on Saturday. He had some drops in Northwestern. And, like, you know, you, you, the margin for error is obviously reduced when you're playing a Michigan, and, and that that kind of stuff can hurt you. But, like, he, he has shown he can beat the coverage, so you just got to you gotta finish the plays. One thing that Ohio State had a little bit of trouble with against Northwestern was defending the QB run. And it feel you know it felt like even when Indiana had their running quarterback in there on Saturday, Ohio State it seemed like they were doing a better job defending that. So, what did they do to change there? And is that something that might come in handy in a, a week or so when JJ McCarthy comes to town? Uh, yes, and yes. So they the what Jim Knowles did was they changed up the looks that they were giving Indiana so that it wasn't as predictable in terms of like what the quarterback was reading. So like. We've talked about before, like the default of Jim Knowles' defense is spill and kill, right? So, like, what he likes to do against like a, a quarterback read game is like crap. Let the end crash down. Uh, it forces the keep, and then like have a linebacker or safety responsible for the quarterback. Um, the and and he will change that up, and he changed it up against Saturday. Like, who who's going to be responsible for the quarterback? Like, you know, you do end up in situations though, and this happened against Northwestern, where you're spilling to no one, like, they're caught in another responsibility, or, like, you know, you're left with, like, Ronnie Hickman coming down from the middle of the field to account for the quarterback, which, you know, you can do, you're just going to give up some yards, and so, like, you did see them occasionally on Saturday change it up and have the defensive end, it's called surf, so the reason it's called that is because they literally look like you're kind of, like, surfing, Um, and so, like, you'll see, like, JT Tumalo, like, he's sort of, like, in that, you know, I'm for those watching, I'm, I'm about ready to get in a surf position, but uh, it's like, and you kind of, you kind of squeeze down, but you keep your you keep your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, which generally results in the quarterback giving. Um, you know, like a quarterback can try to beat that. Oh, hit JT and Harrison are such good athletes; they can surf and still get the quarterback. Um, but you, so you did see different techniques while outnumbering, and so against like Michigan, like you know. The running game is obviously the job number one, but but what makes Michigan a, a really good running team in part is that they combine the run game with e- either read runs. They they actually use those somewhat sparingly, but like a lot of reliefs, a lot of like RPOs on the backside that you have to account for. Um, and so it'll obviously be you can't just sort of like it's not like a traditional Wisconsin where you can kind of gang up on the run. You have to you have to be able to account for those various options. And so the, those are the kind of change ups that will come in uh, will be pretty critical to, to sort of to try to keep uh, McCarthy off balance. All right. So we're already talking Michigan. So let's just be real honest about things. This weekend is obviously not the one that most Buckeye fans are thinking about right now. But, you know, what should people be looking for during that Maryland game that they don't really care about? You know, and this could be either side of the ball. What's what's something that people might be able to look at and say, OK, this is a positive indication about Ohio State's chance of having success against Michigan in, you know, whatever phase of the game we're talking about. Yeah, so it's funny because, like, when you get to games like this and, um, you know, this matters throughout the season, but, like, 
coaches go back to the last like four or five games when you're breaking down film. And obviously like the last one you play is important. So there's two ways to approach it, right? Like you can, you can break tendencies purposely against like a Maryland, let's say, so that when you try to go back to your base stuff, like Michigan has to account for that. Like you did in fact see that like Indiana was accounting for CJ Stroud as a run threat. Uh, which did did help and make a difference. So like he kept a couple of times. It didn't really result in anything. But like you could see like the backside defender, you know, sort of stay put. So you could see that. But I think that the the bigger thing to me would be, I'd like to see them continue with what they were doing in the run game. Like you know, I guess if they went back to running a bunch of stretch, at least stretch with maybe with Dallin Hayden would be okay with it. But at least stretch with like, uh, you know, if Henderson's playing. Uh, you know, I would be a little concerned. I mean, I, I think they, they need to continue down this path of inside zone, duo, and gap um, more prominently. And then, obviously, like, I'd like to see them do, do better in short yardage. Um, and so um, I think that that, again, can come a lot from formation use and, and variation. Um, and then, you know, finally on defense, I mean, Maryland does present a, a somewhat of a passing threat, at least they have through points of this season. Uh, and, you know, we just don't have much evidence of how of Ohio State having to defend a competent passing game. Um, it's pretty incredible. Ohio State's played 10 games this season, and they not they haven't yet had one where their top three corners are all available. So, like, I'm just looking at how they handle, like, if you have Denzel Burke, Cam Brown, and Jordan Hancock, who's starting? Are they rotating? How are they handling that? How are they playing? Because, you know, I do think for Michigan, Michigan's passing game obviously is a weakness. I mean. They were doing a good job this year throwing to their tight end schoonmaker. He's he's hurt now. Um, and so, you know, Ronnie Bell is, is pretty good. Ronan Wilson's like shifty off of screens. But, you know, I think you'd probably would say that's like a relative weakness versus relative weakness for Ohio State. Maybe unknown. I mean, Ohio State's safeties are good, but those corners just like have had some issues, have been injured in and out of the lineup. So I, I think you'd like to see a nice game out of the, the against the pass as well. Well, we will uh, follow that all weekend, and then next week, it's officially Michigan week. We can officially talk about Michigan without having the, well, they play another game for it. No, 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 no. Next week is Michigan week. We are going to have loads of fun coverage. I'm sure Ross and I will find a time to record, holidays or not. Uh, we'll find a time to make something work next week uh, in the lead-up to that Michigan game. Ross, I suspect there may be some things to talk about in the lead-up to that game. I suspect we will probably have a number of podcasts with Ross with our recruiting guys talking about uh, the recruiting angle to the game, with uh, Kevin and Tony and everyone else talking about the Michigan side of the game, the Ohio State side of the game, all that stuff. Plenty to talk about next week. We will be ha- ha- be having all of those conversations at BuckeyeHuddle.com. You can find Ross's article there as well. Always, uh, always worth a read. And he is just one of four scheme gurus that we have, so there is a lot of X's and O's content there. If you like this kind of show, you will love being a member of BuckeyeHuddle.com. Great coverage there on X's and O's. Great coverage there on recruiting. Great coverage there on the team. We do it all. You should you should uh, be a member there because there's going to be a... You're, let's be honest. You're going to spend the whole next week going, I wish it was Saturday. Why isn't it Saturday yet? A great place to kill time next week and uh, perhaps avoid your family during Thanksgiving is at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Sign up today. Membership is less than 50 cents a day. Just try it for the first 30 days. If you like it, you can ask for it for Christmas for an annual membership. Uh, makes uh, you know that it, That is truly the gift that keeps giving all year round. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.